Hi guys, welcome back to the channel Spare Parts, and today I'll be reviewing set number 75337, the ATTE Walker. Set came out in the year 2022, comes with 1,082 pieces and 8 minifigures. That's a lot of minifigures for a LEGO Star Wars set. Let's unbox this. So taking a first look at the box art, you can see that on the background, I think it is Utapau, which is pretty accurate to what we see in the film. On the back, there's a different scene of the walker with the back open, and it looks like there's Commander Cody coming out. And there's some other troopers on the ground, and then the droids over here. You can see there's some boxes that feature the play features. I'm really excited to unbox this set and try those for myself. All right, time to open this set up. So this is what was inside the box. We have six bags and then there's a bunch of smaller bags to go along with each bag. Like the six bag has a big bag and a small bag. Then we also have an instruction manual, which I'm guessing has the sticker sheet inside of it. That's something LEGO's been doing recently as they have put the sticker sheet inside of the instruction manual case, especially with bigger sets, just to make sure it doesn't get bent. But anyway, let's get this thing built. So this is what the set looks like all built. You can see here is the walker and it is a pretty big walker and it comes with eight minifigures, which is crazy for a LEGO Star Wars set. Five of them are clones and three of them are droids, but still that's a lot of minifigures and the clones are really cool. You also get a dwarf spider droid in the back there which isn't accurate to the scene this is based on, but it's still a pretty cool build. The outside of the walker has a lot of features on it, including these ball turrets right here. There's some on the other side as well, and a huge cannon at the top, which can move up and down and go side to side. This is actually accurate. It's just, it's a really big cannon. As you can see, it kind of tilts downwards at the end because it's so long, but I think it's really cool. It has some stud shooters on the side that you can fire off and they work pretty well. They're that new design that's like sideways launching and then on the back there are also some more ball turrets which are pretty cool there are a lot of them on this set i had i didn't have any ball turrets before this and they work really nicely they don't break off at all so you're not going to break these off anytime and there is a handle on the set so you can lift it up it's a little top heavy but it still is nice to include a handle the gun on top does actually have space for a minifigure in it you can place them right here and then you can swivel the gun this is a little bumpy because he's not connected by any studs there's just a flat brick there but it is nice how you can place a gunner there. It's just, look at how bumpy this is when you spin. It's just like kind of crazy. Another play feature outside this set includes, or really this is an interior detail and an exterior detail, is that you can remove this front piece right here with the windshield in it. And there's actually a chair for a minifigure to sit with some joysticks. And you can place a minifigure in there. Then you slide it back in on these rails. And I really like this function. It's actually built with some really clever techniques. And I think it looks super good once the minifigure's in there. You can kind of see them through the side windows as well. So that's a really nice function of the set as well. One extremely cool function of the set is when you lift it up, the legs are dangly and they're not really set in a certain position. So when you drop it, it like automatically adapts to the terrain, which I think is a super cool and unique feature. Like I've had walkers that don't do that, like the AT-80. When you put it down on a non-smooth surface, it falls over immediately. And I think that's a really nice feature this set includes, and it actually is pretty unique. Now taking a look at the interior of the walker, the way you access the front interior is you lift the panel with the gun, or the big cannon, I should say, up. And that does not give you a lot of access, so that's why this set also allows you to fold these pieces out. And that gives you full access to the front interior of this walker. Inside the front of the walker, there are two seats for minifigures, so you could seat your figures in there if you wanted to. I'll take one of the two 12th troopers and seat them down there, and that's pretty nice. It is very loosely attached in there, or actually it isn't attached at all, this piece that has the seats on it. So you kind of just pull it out, and that can be very annoying when carrying it. Sometimes it comes loose. So I, I don't know how you would really fix this. I bet you could take off some of the pieces in there and attach it with studs. I feel like that'd be a much needed improvement for this set. There aren't a lot of things that needs to be improved about the set. It is a really good set overall. And in this little area, you can see there's a wrench, there's a crate, which has some binoculars in it. That just seems like something Lego designers throw in a lot are those, that white pair of binoculars. And then you just put the crate back. There are some like stud pieces there to attach them. And then there's a rack of thermal detonators, which are really nice. This is a very common print, but I do like that print. You can also see from this angle there is a door in there that doesn't lead to anywhere. It just kind of gives the illusion that there is a continuous hallway through the walker. And now it's time to take a look at the other side of the interior. So the way you access this one is it's a little bit different than the other side. There actually is a connection here between these two panels. So you fold this one up, but first you have to disconnect it. Then you fold this one down, and then you can also fold these both out, which is very nice. This gives you a much more open look at the interior. 
So taking a closer look at this interior here, you can see there are five different seats for minifigures. And you can fit all five if you remove this weapons cart here, because if it's in there and you try to force a minifigure in there, their arms will get in the way. So you can fit five in there. And it is really nicely designed with this like light tan color. So this is what the interior looks like with all five minifigures in there. You can fit some other minifigures back here by this empty door frame. As you can see, there are some various jumper plates all around that you can store weapons in. There is a cup over here and you can kind of stick their weapons up like this. It would fit with a shorter weapon, like there's some space for these bigger weapons back there, but you can also store their weapons in there as well. There's also a very nice fire extinguisher in there, which is a very nice detail. And of course you can remove it and you'd have extra space for a blaster, but I like to keep it in there because it's kind of silly. Taking a look at minifigures, my favorite one in this set by far is Commander Cody. And he looks really cool with all this battle damage and printing on him. One unfortunate thing is I wish he had a waist cape. I don't really know if he actually had one, but something just feels incomplete about him. This isn't a real complaint. This is just something, I don't know if it's like the Mandela effect or something like I'm remembering it wrong, but I feel like he should have a waist cape. On the back, he has a very nice jetpack print. I think that's what this is. It might not be, it might just be a backpack. It just reminds me of a jetpack and you can see he has some nice ammo cartridge prints on there. Underneath the helmet, you can see he has a unique print there. And something else I wanted to point out about this minifigure is I really like how he has orange arms. None of the other troopers have that and I think it's a really nice detail on him. His helmet is also like kind of interestingly printed. As you can see on the top, there's like some gold and then there's some orange on the bottom. I didn't know that's what his helmet looked like, but I think it looks really nice. Taking a look at the three 212 troopers included in this set, I think they look amazing. A big controversy with these minifigures is that their helmet looks a little weird. Like that's not how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to look more V-shaped and it looks more like a U. I'll bring up a picture of the box. You can kind of see how there are differences. But other than that, I think they look really good. Wish they had orange arms but I don't know if that's accurate. I just think they look better with orange arms. Their head printing is the same for all of them. It's just like a basic clone head printing. It is updated from the angry girl face that we used to get, and I like this much better. You can also see they have some nice back printing, but really they are really cool minifigures, except for that kind of false advertising on Lego's end. I still think they look really cool, and I love that toe printing. The last minifigure we have for the clone side is the 212th clone gunner, and I think he looks really cool. I have another clone gunner, and I feel like this minifigure looks a lot better than him. He has a lot more battle scarring and details on him. And I really do like that torso printing with like the half on, half off, like black armor piece. Also great toe printing. On the back, we have some really nice printing as well. I love that strap detail. Lego's gotten a lot better with their printing. And I feel like these clones are really good. Underneath the helmet, it's just a basic clone face that they've been using now. Glad it's not the angry girl face, but just look at that helmet print for a second. That looks really good. I just, I feel like I really like that battle scarring and the colors on this. That helmet looks amazing. The final minifigures we have in the set, there is a figure we'll get to after these, or a buildable figure, I should say. These are the three battle droids and they look pretty good. They're just the normal battle droids, except they have that nice chrome blaster. And this is something I've wanted to discuss for a while. I think I touched on it in my Clones vs. Droids Battle Pack video, is that LEGO's been doing a much better job at integrating different, like, LEGO guns or blasters into these Star Wars sets. Like, if you just look at the old battle droids, they used to all have just the plain black blasters. And just looking at the set, even the clone troopers, they have those like nice long range rifles with the candlestick on the end. Like Lego's gotten a lot better at integrating different weapons into these sets. Like it used to just be the plain blaster piece. And I feel like Lego's done a much better job at including a wide variety of them in different Lego sets. So I gotta say, I really do like that chrome blaster and the battle droids are just basic battle droids. Lastly, for minifigures and figures, we have this dwarf spider droid, which looks really cool in my opinion. I love the battle droid torso for like part of the leg structure. I think it looks really cool. He also has a moving cannon in the front and that's really nice. He is pretty flimsy though. He's only held up by this clear piece. So his legs kind of get contorted. He does have a ball turret on the top for his little antenna, which is pretty hard to move, but I think it's a really cool build. It's just, it's really not accurate to what we see in the movie. In the movie, these are supposed to be crab droids and they decide to include a dwarf spider droid. I really don't care that much. I feel like this is a good enough build. It just, that might tick some people off with the accuracy. Taking a look at stickers and prints, this set does not include that many. To be honest, I was kind of surprised with the size of the sticker sheet. I thought it would be bigger, but some of the stickers are really annoying, which I will get into. Just looking at this side of the set, you can see these are both stickers. This is a sticker. This piece up here is a sticker, and both of these top pieces are stickers. They aren't really that detailed. They're just like 
some kind of designs on those light gray and dark gray pieces. They could have done clear because the problem with the set is they are really discolored. If you look at it closely, you can see that the sticker gray is different than the actual gray. But having clear stickers is always a nightmare because if you mess up, your fingerprint is on the sticker and it's there forever. So I feel like LEGO made the right choice. I just wish they would have printed some of these. The other side of the set is more of the same story. These are both stickers. This is a sticker. That side of this thing is a sticker. And we already covered both of those stickers. And now it's time to get into the rant. All right. I cannot tell you how much pain this sticker right here caused. And there's two of them. There's one over here as well. It is ridiculous. I wish LEGO would have printed this so bad. I know on, I think the V-Wing set, they did this exact same thing. They made a sticker for this piece. And when I see this type of sticker, it just like about gives me a heart attack. Like, Another unfortunate piece to be stickered when it really should have been a print in my opinion is this control panel piece right here. This was actually a sticker which I really don't like. I wish LEGO would print this. It's a small piece. I feel like they can afford it. And also with like um, the piece at the top here on this gun, there's a print right here. They printed this. I mean, that's a common print, but I feel like if they can print that, they should be able to print that piece over there. And I feel like it'd be really nice to have some sort of exclusive print in this $140 set. Something LEGO did print were these thermal detonator pieces, which I'm glad for. They wouldn't sticker these. This is a very common print. I wish LEGO would put more exclusive prints in sets. This is kind of a minor nitpick. Well, not really, because I kind of just ranted about this piece right here. But I do feel like it'd be nicer to have that control panel piece printed. Like, just give us something exclusive. I mean, there are many figures those are exclusive. But anyways, it is still nice to get some prints in here, even if they just are thermal detonators. So now discussing value and price per piece briefly. So when this set released in 2022, it retailed for $140 with 1,082 pieces, as you can see there. And that's an awful price per piece, just looking at it, that's like 14 cents per piece. And there are some bigger pieces on the set, as you can see. But I don't think that's really actually the best value for the set. I got it for $112 at Target, and I thought that was a pretty good value, especially with all the minifigures you get, I feel like that was probably a better value than $140. So I'd say this is probably $20 overpriced. Cause like, if you actually look at the size of the set, I feel like it just, it doesn't seem like it's worth $140. I don't know, just my opinion here. I feel like it's a much better value at around $120 or $100. So overall, I think this set is a nine out of 10, a near perfect set. The build is amazing. I gotta say, this is probably one of the best Lego Star Wars builds I've ever seen like besides the stickers, but really once you have them applied, you're really not gonna have to worry too much about them except for the miscoloration, which is probably one of the reasons it is a nine out of 10. Another thing that kind of brings it down is the minifigures, they're not that bad. It's just that false advertising by Lego kind of brings them down. But I feel like other than that, they're great minifigures, great printing. Even the battle droids are cool with their nice new chrome weapons. So really it's a nine out of 10 set. I really don't see how you could go wrong with this unless you like don't wanna spend over $100 on LEGO, which I can definitely see that, but for just looking at everything included here, I think it is a really good set overall. So there you have it, guys. That was my review of set number 75337, the ATTE Walker. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.